So seven jurors now seated after just two days of the former president's first criminal trial. Also today, there's new polling on what voters make of the charges against him. It comes from the Associated Press and shows that fully half of all registered voters say he would be unfit for office if convicted of them. There's, of course, a substantial partisan split, but even among Republicans, 15 percent consider convictions on the New York charges to be disqualifying for the presidency. The AP numbers follow New York Times polling over the weekend, showing that 58 percent of registered voters consider the charges either very serious or somewhat serious, with women being twice as likely as men to say very serious. There's also the question of whether this trial has the potential of changing any minds among the former president's staunchest supporters which is why our Gary Tuckman went to Texas in the Trumpiest county of the 2016 and 2020 elections. In the cover Hay and Ron Swart settled in along with us in their living room to watch coverage of the Trump trial jury selection. One group went through the effort to make a large parade-style banner reading, no one is above the law. They've both voted for Trump twice. What is your feeling today about Donald Trump's moral character? It's terrible. I can't get much lower than it is. They live on a hilltop ranch in Roberts County in the Texas Panhandle, where 96% of the voters chose Trump over Joe Biden in 2020, the highest Trump percentage of any county in America. He uh, continues to make crazy comments um, about being a dictator's first day and uh, repercussions against people who have, he feels have wronged him. We met this couple during a visit to Roberts County last year. They told us then they liked Mike Pence and Ron DeSantis. But with Trump the only Republican left standing, things have gotten complicated. If Donald Trump is found guilty of one of these crimes, whether it's in this trial happening right now or if one of the trials <clears> happens <throat> in the future, do you think he's fit to be president of the United States? I don't think he's fit, but I'm voting for him. Uh, I really feel like that we not going to be able to survive another four years of the Democrats in charge. Rick McDowell is someone else we met last year in Roberts County. He told us then he liked Ron DeSantis. If Donald Trump is found guilty of a criminal charge, do you think he's fit to be president of the United States? He's as fit as the current president. Why is that? Because nobody investigates Joe Biden. Nobody's going to investigate Joe Biden. In Roberts County, the current president is often prominently mentioned when you ask questions about the former president. You think Donald Trump is of low character and poor morals and poor ethics? Oh, definitely. Most, most definitely. He's... You don't think he's fit to be president if he's found guilty, yet you're going to vote for him. How do you address that conflict? How do you vote for a man who you feel so poorly I, I feel like as is, is, is wrong as it's going to be to have him for president, he's still going to be a lot better president for the United States than what we've got with Joe Biden and the Democrats. Here in Roberts County in the 2016 election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, Clinton received a grand total of 20 votes. Four years later, Joe Biden received 17 votes. This is a 1929 model. Well, eh? And was this actually used here in Roberts here County? Here in Roberts County. Susan Bowers is the curator of the Roberts County Museum in the county seat of Miami. In 2020 here in Roberts County, only 17 people in the entire county voted for Joe Biden. Were you one of them? Yes, I was. She says she has quibbles with some of what President Biden has done and not done. But unlike almost all of her fellow county voters, Susan Bowers is not giving Donald Trump any benefit of the doubt when it comes to this trial or the one still to come. He's, a, he's, he's unethical. He's a criminal. He belongs on reality TV, if that. And Gary joins us now. Are most of the people you've talked to paying close attention to the former president's uh, New York trial? Well, first of all, Anderson, I should tell you that there are many people here in this county who don't think there should be any Trump trials. That being said, almost everyone we talk to is well aware that these proceedings have begun this week, but that awareness would be at a much higher level here and elsewhere if the proceedings were allowed to be televised in the courtroom, and of course they're not. Anderson. Yeah. Gary Tuckman, appreciate it. Thanks very much. Perspective now from CNN political commentator Alyssa Farr Griffin. Alyssa, does it surprise you that, that some of the voters Gary spoke to don't think Trump is fit to be president, but still plan to vote for him even if he's convicted in a trial? 
No, fascinating as always, but absolutely models conversations I'm having with Republicans. And if there is one thing Donald Trump has done incredibly effectively this campaign cycle, it's defining Joe Biden as the enemy. So he's set out to kind of create this vision of the hellscape of America that we can't survive four more years of, instilling fear in voters so that they're able to say something like, Donald Trump is a morally bankrupt person, but it's still better than four more years of Joe Biden. And Biden hasn't quite yet drawn as, as stark of a contrast that I think has really locked in his voters in the same way that Trump has. It's very, very effective. There's this recent Reuters Ipsos poll showing that 24 percent of Republicans would not vote for Trump if he's convicted of a felony by a jury. Do you think the Trump campaign has taken that number seriously? And do you think that's even true? I and mean, people may say that to a pollster, but when it gets down to be a binary choice, like some of the people there, they said they'll vote for him anyway. So listen, this number models CNN and CBS exit polls as well from the primary that quite a large sum of Republicans would have an issue supporting Donald Trump if he was a convicted felon. But what I would be interested to see is if it was um, when it's specific to the hush money trial and after we see this trial play out. Because January 6 documents case, unquestionably, I think that would move a lot of Republican voters. And it's also why it's so important that at least January 6 be able to move and go to trial ahead of the election. But I'm already seeing kind of the movement of Republicans saying hush money, the hush money case doesn't matter. Um, so even if voters say, you know, the idea of voting for a convicted felon goes against what I stand for, it's going to matter how Republican elected officials respond to this case. And I expect we're going to see the usual, whether it's Elise Stefanik, outside allies of Donald Trump's who are going to say this is a witch hunt, this isn't serious, it's a wrongful case brought against him. And that will, I think, sway some uh, public opinion with Republicans, even if he is, in fact, convicted. There was a, this New York Times Siena College poll where women were twice as likely as men, 40 percent to 20 percent, to view the charges as very serious. The, the, does the gender split at all surprise you there? No, and I actually would pay attention to that number. So the facts of this case, as we know, it's campaign finance, it's about business records, but some of the more salacious aspects, which I think we're going to hear about as the trial starts to get into motion, the allegations, obviously, of cheating on his wife when she was pregnant, things like that stay in the mind of the voter, and I think they sit worse with women, perhaps, than they do male voters. Now, of course, the public has been familiar with this case since 2018 when it was on our radar, but I think we may see some deeper details from it as this trial plays out that we're going to hear about. And that's where I think that there's going to be major movement. Um, women are one of the biggest obstacles for Donald Trump heading into his reelection. You know, we're 50 percent of the population, but he's struggled in the primary. Um, women split more heavily when given the opportunity for people like Nikki Haley. And this could definitely hurt him. If this trial were ultimately to end a hung jury, would that be as good as an acquittal in terms of political benefit, do you think? Yeah, I think Donald Trump would be able to frame it as basically a vindication and exoneration. Um, that's what he does. He's a brander, if nothing else. Um, and I think that he knows how to market something to, to his favor, especially to the core audience that he's trying to reach, this Republican voting bloc that he needs to win over. Well, this is Far Griffin. Thanks so much.